The authors of this study want to make clear that people living with mental illnesses are rarely violent, but this research is focused on the fraction of patients who do have violent tendencies. The author says that the grief of parents who have children with serious mental illnesses and violent tendencies parallels that of parents whose children have died. I refuse to grieve. I, I don't like the feeling, you know, I, and I, I want her back. Crystal Barassa of Bristol is fighting to preserve the future she's envisioned for her 15-year-old daughter. The teen is involved in the family's auto racing activities, described by Barassa as an active spirited girl. She also lives, Barassa says, with severe mental illness. I'm a 35-year-old adult that she put her hands on and had no problem connecting with my jugular. Changes in behavior, Barassa says, followed a divorce from her husband and ramped up during adolescence. Her diagnoses include ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, anxiety, and depression. Symptoms manifest in bursts of rage, Barassa says. She becomes a little violent. Barassa sees some parallels between her experience and that of other parents detailed in a recently published study from researchers at the University of Maine. You know, these parents are exhausted. Karen Sporer is the author of the new UMaine study on grief among parents raising children with serious mental illnesses and violent tendencies. The research, she says, shows that as a way of coping, parents reconstructed their child's identity in one of two ways. The first, described as, my child is absent, with parents perceiving their child changed into a completely different person or stranger, describing them as dead or gone. There's also real sadness and mourning and a sense of loss that the child that they raised and the dreams and aspirations they had, not just for their children, but their family lives, has sort of fallen apart. Other parents, according to Sporer, separate their child from mental illness and violence. I know it's part of her, but it's not. When the violence happens or the anger happens, it's almost like she blacks out. Barassa's daughter has been hospitalized twice for mental health emergencies. She wants her admitted to a long-term residential mental health care facility. The life I saw for my daughter, if she doesn't get the help she needs, she's not going to have that life. The teen also wants residential care, but case managers tell the family there's a wait list. Barassa has not lost sight of the vision she has for her daughter's future. It is racing to get her treatment. I've put my entire life around her, always and I don't think it's ever going to change. And that's why I want her to have the help she needs so bad. A spokesperson for Maine DHHS says availability of services such as residential mental health care for children is tied to providers' ability to hire and retain staff amid record low unemployment. To help, the agency says that the governor's budget proposal includes $17 million to expand children's behavioral health services. In studio, Terry Stackhouse, Maine's Total Coverage.